I want you to think about something for a moment. <clears throat> uh, I've never lived in England, but I, but I see these things and I hear these things regularly. Prince William didn't become a prince. He was born a prince. How many of you guys understand that? Right? Let me rephrase that again, okay? When he was conceived, he was conceived as a prince. He, he, that's just the way it is. Um, his son, George, he, he, he's, he's just born a prince. He was conceived a prince. There's people who have this idea that Jesus Christ became something. <laughs> that's, that's just wrong. It's, it's, it's just simply wrong. He didn't become anything. He, he always was. He always was. One of the great verses in all of Scripture is from the book of Genesis, where the reference to God is O U R, O O U R. That's referring to the wonderfulness of Jesus Christ, the wonderfulness of the Holy Spirit, and the wonderfulness of God the Father Almighty. I pray that today you will leave here encouraged with one major thought. Why in the world would we call him wonderful? And that he's always been that, and he always will be. Let's pray. Father God, may the time together here just simply be, uh, may you be the potter, and may I be the clay, and may all of us be those that are molded by the scriptures. You are absolutely wonderful. You're called wonderful. You have the title of wonderful. And we appreciate that. Amen. <clears throat> There's over 250 references to, by name to Jesus in, 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 in the Bible. Okay? There's a, there's, that's a lot more than people think. Okay? Uh, some of them are descriptions and some are, some are titles. Some are prophetical statements about who he's going to be, and, and some are reminders of what he did. But the point is, that's, that, that, that's a lot. How many have a nickname? Anybody got a lot of nicknames? My name was Twiggy growing up, okay? And uh, the reason why I was named Twiggy is because my legs were about the size of a toothpick, okay? And my stomach was a little bit more like a balloon. Um, and when they got tired of Twiggy, they changed it to duck, Okay? And uh, then when my legs finally started to grow a little bit, it became lunch wagon. Um, and uh, that, that, was, that, was, that was just what it was in our family. You know? uh, the truth is, is that, uh, is that this, this passage that was just read, I, I, I want to read Isaiah 9, 6, and then I want to read the verse right after it. Okay? Verses, Isaiah 9, 6 says this, For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. How many of you guys ever get, get frozen right there? Like, the government will be on his shoulders. <gasps> He's not paying all of our IRS bills, okay? I just want you to know that, okay? But, but, but the, the government will be on his shoulders, meaning this, is that, is that there's is that very simple. The government has the ability, and the government has a, um, a thought that they're in charge of all legal matters. And all the legalities, all of the invoices of our lives are on his shoulders, not yours and mine. Every debt, every guilt, all of those things that the government has control of are on his shoulders. Incredible. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Notice this is prophetical. Okay, His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And we're going to be looking at one of these names each week. But, but, the, but the scripture goes on for one moment. And it says this in verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So he will be wonderful forever. And he always has been wonderful. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice, righteousness from the time on forever. You know, there's, there's, there's words that mean absolutely nothing. Anybody here a MASH fan? 
Okay, I used to watch MASH all the time. I, I loved some of the names that, there were, that, that Sherman Potter called people, okay? Uh, you know, uh, Doohickey, you know, Skedaddle, Poppycock, uh, uh, Whippersnapper, Lollygag, Whatchamacallit, Shenanigans, Discombobulated. Uh, one of my favorite was the word nincompoop, okay? And uh, the reason why nincompoop was so important to me is because in high school we had a math teacher, okay? If anybody here went to Stag in the 70s, there was a guy named Mr. Spaulding. And Mr. Spaulding, any time that you, he explained on the board how to do a problem, you didn't know how to do it, he would just look at you and go, you ninny. He, you were just called a ninny if you didn't get it right away. And, and uh, it was an advanced math class. I didn't really think a whole lot about it. And one day I, I didn't really know what the word meant, so I called my mom a ninny at home. I just want you to know that's not a good idea, okay? Um, and uh, at that point in time, I was understood what that word meant, okay? Had a teacher in junior high. His name is Mr. McCabe. And a Mr. McCabe taught to mechanical drawing, which they don't teach anymore. Now they do this electronic stuff, okay? We did it the real way with a pencil and, you know, and compass and dividers and all those sorts of things. And, and, and we would have the, his, he was famous for these matching quizzes, Okay? And there was always 11 choices, but there was only 10, 10 words. And one of them was always T-H-A-N-G, Fang. Now, I can't tell you how many people chose Fang for an item. I asked him after the first test, where would this word Fang come from? He says, I've been using that word for who knows how long. He goes, you'd be surprised how many people think Fang is one of these deals. He goes, they're just guessing. He goes, I have a lot of fun, John. He's walking around and watching people circle the word thang or put down that. He he goes, I just think it's really cool how foolish some people are. And, uh, you know, sometimes these phrases are just misleading, though. You you ever use a misleading? This is a misleading phrase. That is the best sandwich ever. (laughs) You're talking about every sandwich you're ever going to eat. How many of you guys have heard somebody say that about something more than once? Have any of you ever thought what I thought? Liar. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, uh, you know, or, or that's the scariest thing ever. That's the funniest thing ever. And then, and then there's other things that words, words mean nothing because, because they're just wrong. But we understand what they mean. Um, how many of you are familiar with the word oxymoron? Okay, like 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 jumbo shrimp, adult children, pretty ugly, um, seriously funny, freezer burnt, minor minor crisis, an original copy. But today we look at a name that doesn't fall in any of those categories. It falls into the it falls into this category of just being what we call true and right, a proclamation, a title deserved. It is the word wonderful. If you stick the word wonderful in, in the, on your, uh, on your uh, computer and then you hit the little down button thing and it turns up and you press on synonyms, these are some of the words that come up. Beautiful, precious, perfect, fulfilling, marvelous, great, amazing. And this word surprised me. And then I thought about it. It was my favorite on the list. And this is our application, inspiring. I would have not included that in the list. So I went to a couple other sources, and the word inspiring comes up every time. You see, in the scripture days, names had rich and deep meaning, okay? Um, Some of you have named your children or grandchildren been named just because they like the name. Some because it was was a prophetic of what it was. Um, in, 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 in brief, let me explain this to you, okay? Um, uh, one, of our, one, of our, one of our daughters has a name for a very specific reason because of something. Bev was very, very, very sick. We didn't know if she was going to live or die. I was asked by the, um, by the doctor to have her have an abortion uh, because of the fact that she was doing so bad. She'd lost a whole lot of weight and everything. And I remember we called the elders of the church and had them come and pray over her and anoint her with oil. And, uh, and, 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 and the truth is, this was, this was uh, um, when we called, it was just a couple of days after, maybe it was even the same day that this doctor had told me, um, hey, you and your wife needs to get an abortion. Well, we found this out later on. There's some other people who 
were friends with this doctor. And the reason why we were in this situation is because that doctor had made some misdiagnosis and should have started some things earlier. And he was really hoping to cover up what he thought was going to be a death anyway. And he was just trying to get off his own shoulders. Well, when it came time to uh, name this name our daughter, we, we, ch- we chose the name Christy. And we chose the name Christy because the name Christy means anointed one. And, uh, and, we, and, and we believed that God had a special plan for her to be, be living. And the, and the truth is, is that that name was not just some random choice name. And there's nothing wrong with random choice names. But in this case, there's a reason why she has this name. So as we refer to, to Jesus, I want you to know that there's, there's sometimes there's misunderstandings. And, and the first one is that misunderstanding of the idea that he didn't start being wonderful in the manger. Okay, he was, he was already. Even though he was God in the flesh, his, his, his entry was very humble and simple. Even though he was wonderful, we, we think, oh, they should have had signs. That, you know, W-O-N-D-E-R. You know what I mean? It should, should have been spelling it out. Should have been a, a, a flashy thing. Um, he didn't have two earthly parents. He only had one but yet he's wonderful. There was no photography. There was no social media posts back in those days, but there was a gender reveal. His name. This gender reveal was a couple of hundred years before he was born. There's over 300 prophecies about this coming wonderful birth. There were insights about uh, his death, his life, his, 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 his resurrection. He was given as a son, and the government would be upon his shoulders, which meant that all of the guilt and weightiness of mankind would be placed upon him. So let's start with this. His name, Wonderful, is not an afterthought. You guys know what an afterthought is? That's a, I forgot something that was important. No, 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 this was, this, was, this was made ahead of time. He's not just referred to as wonderful, he is wonderful. It's not just a reference to a one-time act of appreciation, it is an eternal declaration. His name was not wonderful, his name not will be wonderful, his name is wonderful. I love the old hymn. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's always been wonderful. He's always been wonderful. He came here knowing that his destiny was uh, to die for our sins. That's pretty wonderful. In the, in the scriptures, it sp- says this, In the fullness of time, he who has always been revealed himself in the flesh. That is absolutely wonderful. What a gift and what a silencing to the long-standing questioning of when is this Messiah going to come. What a presence of light in the darkness. He's always been and now he's going to be in the flesh. He has existed before time. He created light and space. He has lasted through the fall of man, the flood, Abraham, Moses, the judges, the monarchy, the divided kingdom, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire, the Roman Empire, the days of Alexander the Great. He was there before all of that. Isaiah 40, verse 20 says he holds the waters of the earth in the span of his hand. Would you just go like this for a second? And we're not in Hawaii, okay? And we're not in Texas, all right? That's called, this is referred to as the, the, the this little space there is referred to as the span of your hand. And it says that he holds all the waters of the earth in the span of his hand. He probably doesn't even need that much space. It's probably more like that, Okay? I mean, he didn't, use, he didn't use any excessive energy in creating everything. He just did. But I think the most incredible thing about the fact that he's always been good is that as, as, he, lived here on, as he lived here on earth, um, he showed power over seven incredible things. 
These might be worth writing down. These might be worth writing down. The first one is he showed power over nature. That is wonderful. How many people do you know that can walk up to a fig tree and say, die? How many people do you know that could walk? Remember, remember that huge rainstorm about uh, three weeks ago? The one where trees were falling and it snowed up in the mountains and everything. Imagine just walking out and saying, shh, and it all stopped immediately. That is power over nature. He stilled the water of a lake that was just erupting, okay? He showed power over nature. Here's the second one. He showed power over disease and human struggles. That's wonderful. I mean, he had power over leprosy. He had power over death. He had power over oh, death, a death. I mean, D E A F, okay? All right. Um, he, he had power over the blind. Here, here's a second, here's a third thought. He had power over evil, okay? Um, how did he demonstrate that? One of the places was when he cast all those demons into the pigs, and then the pigs ran over the hill, and then they had barbecued rib dinner later, okay? Um, he, sh he showed power over human need. Um, when, when he fed the 4,000 and when he fed the 5,000. Absolutely phenomenal. He showed power over hate. That to me is phenomenal. How did he show power over hate? He did not throw the rocks at the woman. He did not throw rocks at the woman. He loved those that other people hated. He did not point out the lady who's bleeding. He stopped. But he gave her a chance to give testimony. Hey, 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 come here, come here, come here. Hey, this is who I just healed, everybody. No, he allowed the opportunity. That is, that is, that, okay? Uh, he had power over Satan. He forgave sins. But he also had power over death. As he raised Jairus' daughter, as he raised Lazarus, as he raised himself. When we think about the idea that he's always been wonderful, these elements of power that were not used for selfish desires. Anybody have a quick wit? You ever, you ever, you ever should have bit your tongue? Okay. Uh, if 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 I bit my tongue every time that I misused quick wit, I wouldn't have one any longer. Okay, it would have probably been gone when I was about four. But you know what? He's also wonderful in character. He's wonderful in character. Character is seeing someone who's not self-centered but has every reason to be. Think about that for just a second. He's got every reason in the world to walk around like this. There was a kid in my youth group. His name's Eric, and he used to always do this all the time. Eric's mom said, John, you do Eric better than Eric does. <laughs> but he just had this little thing. He thought he was great. He thought he was God's gift to the world. And you know what? And, and, and later, later on, he became a wonderful gift to the world. Being wonderful in character is seeing someone fulfill what they are capable of. Being wonderful in character is realizing that all the prophecies about this person are true as he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Being wonderful in character is revealing himself and not using his abilities to show off, but to help other people and to help people see his heart. He loved and protected because he knew that we couldn't do it on ourselves. That's character. He came not to curse and kill and destroy, even though he could have. But he came to bless and lift up the fallen, give rest to the weary, or reveal the love of the Father, to pay a sentence and a fine that was not his he came to show love, which is who he was. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He was so wonderful and so delightful in life that there could be no fault found in him. 
How many are familiar with the story of Daniel in the Old Testament? Where he was so incredible that they couldn't find anything wrong. So they made a law about something that he did so that he would break the law. That's, that, that's a whole lot better than, than, than us, okay? I, you could look both ways, okay? Because that's a whole lot better than most of us. He demonstrated his character by rejecting selfishness when he didn't turn the stones into bread. When he didn't bow in the wilderness. When he stopped to help a blind man even though he was escaping his enemies. By weeping over the lostness of mankind and by accepting the cross and scorning the shame of it. His character is appealing and attractive to me as well as motivating for me to imitate. You ever watch one of those movies and afterwards it's like, sorry, this is a sports illustration, okay? It's like, this guy just made this great come from behind thing and you go out to the drive with the basketball, you go, five, four, three, two, and you put it up and then it doesn't go in. So you say three, two, and then you make sure it goes in because you want to, be the, you want to make the winning shot. There's, there's dreams all over the place of us wanting to be doing something heroic, doing something important. And the wonderfulness and character is not pointing to ourselves after that. Here's another thing. He's wonderful for what he said. And he's wonderful for what he did. It is wonderful that he was a sacrifice for us. Isn't it wonderful that his humility was shown beginning in the manger. So that you and I can appreciate who it is that he really came to serve. Because if he came to serve himself, it would have been a flashy move. Wonderful is the description of sin that was paid once and for all. Wonderful is the description of God walking with man. Wonderful is listening to him teach. Wonderful is listening to him teach, but hearing him teach and putting those things into action. He was wonderful in his trials in the last days, listening to false accusations, and yet through all the evil, the government, would, the government was used to pay for yours and my sins. Have you ever thought about this? Praise God for those evil men. God used their evilness to bring you and I a great element of hope. You know, nobody killed him I, I used to say this when I worked with, with kids a lot. I said, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm serious about this. Jesus could have been Spider-Man on the thing and just said, forget you, Ed. Okay. He, he could have been. And that was before those things even were known about. But, but that wasn't who he was. Something I realized at great point and depth this week is that he allowed his death to be public. I'd never thought about this before. He allowed his death to be public and have many people present so that the vastness of what had taken place would be known quickly, would be known by many, many people. Yes, it was humbling, and it wasn't necessarily wonderful to watch but it was a blessing to watch so that you had firsthand knowledge the number of people that could testify to what it was that took place was absolutely incredible let me pause for a second here and there's a couple things in life that um, <clears throat> that sometimes um, inspire us a little bit and if you know a person who's a great woodworker or a woman who's a great quilter they, they just know how to do stuff I mean, and then there's me. I just go to the store and buy it, okay? I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to do some of those things. Um, you, know, you know anybody who's an incredible cook, and when they cook, it's just like, smells like it ought to smell? It's not just the grease from the burger? Um, I mean, there's people who can almost make a liver look good <laughs> and taste good. I, you know, that's probably not something you want to invite company over for but then there's people who can fix everything and 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 and, and they, don't, they don't even need to know what it is they could still fix it hey, hey this thing's broken what is it it's a thang 
to what you might call it, to do hickey. And, but, but, and, and they just look at, oh, well, let me show, show you how to fix this thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here's the key. Sometimes we live in appreciation and sometimes we live being inspired. He's wonderful for what he does today. Oh, you know, he still forgives sins. You know, he's still healing diseases. His presence is still a peace that surpasses all understanding. And he's presently preparing this wonderful place for us, not because we deserve something, not because we earn it, but simply because he loves us. Lastly is this thought. He should be called wonderful for what he will do. He's not done yet. He will rule forever and ever. As it said in verse 7, Isaiah 9, 7, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. My prayer today is that uh, you will have an appreciation and an awe for who he is and that you might be inspired to imitate and to do wonderful acts yourself because that's really an important element. Let's pray together.